Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Cisco configuration files. If you are responsible for making changes, configuration changes to Cisco routers or switches, then you deal directly and indirectly with these two configuration files. So we'll take a look at each one. We'll begin with the startup config and then we'll move on to the running config. And then we'll take a look at some file management techniques available to us on both Cisco switches and routers. So let's get started. Let's begin with the startup configuration file. And this is a good place to start because it stores the initial switch configuration and it's used during the boot process to tell the switch or the router how to behave. So you reload the switch or you power cycle it on and it needs to find some kind of configuration to tell it how to behave, how to function. Well, this is what it looks at, the startup config. So the name kind of gives you a hint when it's used. The startup config is stored in NVRAM. And if you haven't yet checked out the tutorial we have on the Cisco switch memory types, please have a look at that. The NVRAM is memory which is retained on the switch or router whether you reboot it or you power cycle the device, whatever is stored in there is still going to be in there when the switch comes back up. So the startup config is stored in the NVRAM. That should tell you that whatever is in the startup config is going to be there the next time. So we can take a look at the startup config by using the show startup config command. We are at a switch command line and I will issue the show startup command. I will question mark that and you can see there are no parameters to go along with this command. So we just hit enter and this will display the entire startup configuration file. And we can go line by line just by hitting enter. You can hit the space bar to go more quickly. You can hit Q or control C in order to get out of it. You don't have to go to the very end. And let's take a look at the NVRAM where this file is stored. So we issue the dir NVRAM colon and hit enter. And there you can see our startup configuration file. And it tells us how big the file is as well. Next, let's take a look at the running configuration file. And this is what stores the currently used configuration. So you can think of this as pretty much a copy that is made of the startup configuration file. And the switch uses this to actually operate. This is a, a live active file, if you will, whereas the startup config is permanent. It's referenced when the device boots up. The running config is, is what's actually being used to run and operate the switch. So again, the name here gives you a sense of, of its purpose, of what it's doing. And when you make changes in configuration mode, those changes are applied to your running config. They are not applied directly to the startup config. And we'll talk um, a little bit when we, when we discuss file management of how to get your changes made in the running config, how to save them in the startup config. But you need to do something specific to do that. Otherwise, you just have your running configuration and the changes you made there. And so this is a temporary file, temporary configuration file. And so what I mean by that is if you reload the switch or if you power cycle it, you lose power for some reason, when it comes back on, your running configuration, whatever you used to have, is wiped out and a new copy is made from your startup config. So you have a new running configuration. So that means if you don't save your configuration changes, then they get wiped out. So that could be a good thing if you don't want them to be saved, but it can also be a bad thing if you do want them to be saved and you forget and the next time you reload the device, your configuration file is not what you expected. So we looked at the startup configuration file. Here's the command show running config to check out the running configuration file. So let's take a look at that. Okay, we're back at our switch command line and the show running config command. If I question mark that, you see it has two parameters. We don't cover those here, but keep in mind they exist. If you just hit enter, you will now see the entire running configuration file. And you can scroll through this just as you would the startup config file. This file, again, will look exactly like your startup if you haven't made any changes. And if you want to see where it's located, you type the dir system colon. And there you will see our running config is stored right there. So let's talk about managing configuration files. So 
some examples of managing a configuration file would include you've just made some changes to your running config and now you want to save them to your startup config. So the next time you reload the switch, those changes are there. You save them permanently. Another example would be you have a startup configuration file and you want to save it, a copy of it, somewhere else on the network for safekeeping. So you want to copy it from the switch to a TFTP server, for example. Well, how do we do this? The most common command you're going to use is the copy command. So let's take a look at that. And there are two parameters for the copy command. The first one is the source, so where you're copying from. And the second one is the destination where you're copying to. So let's question mark to check out our source options. And you can see all of these lists copy from, copy from, copy from. So where do we want to copy from? Well, just for an example, we could list TFTP. And then to check out the second parameter, we question mark again. And now you can see it's changed. We still have pretty much the same options here. But look, now it says copy to, copy to, copy to. So it's telling us, well, it's asking us really, well, where's your destination file? Where do you want to copy this to? A few things to keep in mind with the copy command. If you copy a file from, let's say, a TFTP server into NVRAM, the, the file you're copying will replace a file that already exists. So let's say I'm going to copy a startup configuration file from a TFTP server and copy, copy it into the NVRAM. Well, if there's already a startup config file in the NVRAM, your new file is going to completely replace it. The opposite is true. Let's say you're copying your startup file from NVRAM and you're copying it to a TFTP server. If that if there's already a file named startup config on your TFTP server, the copy command is going to replace the old file and put this new copied file in its place. It's a little bit different though when you copy into the running config. So let's say you have copy TFTP and then you've got running config. Well, here, you would not completely replace your running configuration. What happens is you merge the two files. So whatever is unique to the source file gets copied into the destination file, and all of the other stuff remains. So maybe to better illustrate that, let's say you have made a bunch of changes to your running configuration, but you haven't saved them, so your startup file is different. If you were to issue the command copy startup config and your destination is running config, well, you wouldn't wipe out and completely replace your running configuration file. What you would do is you take the contents of the startup config file and then take the contents of the running config and merge them. And whatever is the same remains. And then any new stuff introduced in the startup config file would be put into the running config. Um, but it wouldn't completely wipe it out. So it's a little caveat to know when you use the, uh, the copy command. If you want to completely wipe out your running config, the best thing to do is to reload the switch. Okay, let's take a look at some specific examples now. So let's look as a first example, saving a running configuration to the startup config. So if we just take a look at our running configuration, real quickly, we can see our host name is switch. Well, let's make a change. Let's shove in the configuration mode and we'll call this new host name, we'll call it George. And now if you take a look at the running configuration, you can see the host name is George. But let's take a look at the startup configuration. Look, the host name is switch. So we've illustrated that we made a change in configuration mode. It doesn't get applied to the startup command, uh, startup configuration file. So now let's actually apply this change. So we issue copy and our running config is our source. Our destination is the startup config and we hit enter and it asks us for the, to confirm the destination file name. We hit enter again and there we go. So now if we take a look at our startup config, we can see host name is George. 
Now let's take a look at copying from the startup configuration file into the running config, and we'll see the two merge. So in order to illustrate this, let's make a change in our running configuration. And we're going to just go into an interface and put a description on there, and we'll call it just test. So now if we check out our running configuration, in Fast Ethernet 01, we can see description test. But if we check out our show startup command, we can see Fast Ethernet 01 doesn't have a description. So let's see what happens if we do a copy start and we put our destination as the running config. Now it's done. Let's take a look at our running configuration and it's still there. So it was not overwritten. Okay, the two files were merged and that illustrates the point of when you copy into the running configuration, you always merge. So now let's go in the opposite direction. I want to copy from a TFTP server and I want to copy file to the switch. So let's save it in our flash memory and it prompts me for the IP address or the name of the TFTP server and the source file name. Now the switch didn't just guess this for me. I actually tested this earlier, so it's still in here. Um, and yeah, that is the correct name of the file I want to copy. So I can just hit enter, but if it were different, I could type something else. And the destination file name, yeah, I want to leave it the same. I hit enter, and this is a very small file, so it copied very quickly, but you can see the results here. Okay, it tells me how big the file was, file was and the time it took to copy the file over. Finally, let's take a look at removing or deleting the startup configuration file or something in the NVRAM. So we looked at how you would replace the running config, and the best way to do it to completely wipe it out is to reload the switch. Well, here we have a couple of commands. The most current one is erase NVRAM. And before I do that, I'll just show you again the contents of the NVRAM. And we can see our startup config is listed. If we type erase NVRAM, we're prompted to make sure we really want to do that because all these files will be wiped out. And now if we go ahead and take a look at it, um, we can see they're listed, but you can see they're empty. The two zeros, there's no size to those files, so they're just empty files. There are two other commands you can use. They're a bit older, but they usually still work. One is write erase, and the other one is erase startup config. So you can specify exactly the file you want to erase in the NVRAM. Okay, so to summarize everything we went over, we know that there are two configuration files, the startup config and the running config. The startup config is permanent, the running config is a copy, and it runs until the switch is reloaded, then it's wiped out. And any changes you make in configuration mode are applied directly to the running config. And then regarding file management, we looked at the copy command, and we know there are two parameters. You copy from and then you copy to. So it asks you for a, a source and a destination. And there are a couple examples. You can back up files. You can save your running config into the startup. Um, you can save files off to a remote site, say a TFTP server, or copy files from a TFTP server to the switch. So you have a, a bunch of options there for managing your configuration files. And then finally, we looked at three commands to erase the startup config. And just be careful before you do this. Make sure you have a copy saved somewhere because when the switch reloads, it will jump into startup mode because there is no configuration, startup configuration file. And that's it. That is Cisco configuration files. Thanks for watching.